friends welcome to pedodontic lecture series today let's learn about pulpotomy what is pulpotomy where is it indicated its contraindication how is it classified and what are the medicaments used in this procedure we know that the tooth consists of coronal pulp as well as your radicular pulp as you can see in this picture the coronal pulp and this will be your radicular pulp right so in pulpotomy we are dealing with amputation of affected coronal portion of pulp and replacing it with the suitable medicament we are completely removing the coronal pulp and we are replacing it with suitable medicaments okay so let's see how is it defined it is defined as a complete removal of the coronal portion of the dental pulp followed by placement of suitable dressing or medicament that will promote healing and preserve the vitality of the tooth the objective of this procedure is to maintain the tooth and preserve the vitality of the tooth let's see where all it is indicated it is indicated in deep dentinal caries which is involving the coronal pulp and the radicular pulp is unaffected when this when there is mechanical exposure of the pulp that is when we are removing the caries and accidentally the pulp gets exposed and this pulpotomy treatment is age specific when we need to maintain the tooth more than extracting it and also you will check based on the history of the patient that is pain the pain should not be spontaneous nor persistent after the removal of the stimulus and tooth should be restorable tooth with tooth third of the root length and you also check clinically by check seeing the hemorrhage that is bleeding if the bleeding is pale red or if it can be controlled easily then we will go ahead with the pulpotomy procedure okay so where all it is indicated when there is where all it is contraindicated in persistent toothache tenderness on percussion or mobility present root resorption more than one third of the root length large carious lesion with non restorable crown highly viscous sluggish hemorrhage from canal orifice which is uncontrollable and tooth which is close to natural exfoliation so let's see how this pulpotomy is classified it is classified into two types that is vital pulpotomy and non vital pulpotomy this vital pulpotomy is further classified as devitalization pulpotomy preservation pulpotomy and regeneration pulpotomy and the non vital pulpotomy is also called as model pulpotomy there are different materials which you can use for different pulpotomy so one uh, doubt we get is why when do we have to do non vital pulpotomy right that i'll be telling in the further slides so now let's see the medicaments used in this procedure first one is formoxazol which is introduced in the year 1894 and in the 1904 the bulky popularized this formoxazol so it is called as bulky's formoxazol solution which consists of formalin 19% triclosan 35% glycerin 15% and water 31% so here the glycerin is added to prevent the polymerization of formaldehyde to para formaldehyde which happens if what happens if the para formaldehyde is present it causes clouding of the solution that is the reason glycerin is added so let's see its advantage and disadvantages so the advantage includes uh, it is a commonly used or available medicament the stable at room temperature long shelf life high clinical and radiographic success of the formoxazol pulpotomy disadvantages include as a very caustic medicament and if you use in high doses it is toxic 
potent it causes potential systemic absorption and distribution throughout the body it has a mutagenic as well as carcinogenic potential so let's see how, how this technique is performed so in any pulp therapy procedure anesthesia is must okay so we need to first anesthetize the tooth then we need to isolate the tooth which has to be treated with your rubber dam we excavate all the caries if it is soft with your spoon excavator or you can go ahead with uh, your erotor and then remove the dentin roof of the pulp chamber with your high speed non end cutting burr and copious water spray has to be done remove all the coronal pulp tissue with a slow speed that is with your number 6 or number 8 round burr or a sharp spoon excavator once the cavity is prepared uh, we need to achieve uh, hemostasis that is using your moist cotton pellet so take your small cotton pellet dip it in the formocrisol squeeze it and then place it in the pulp chamber for about four minutes okay once you place this you remove after four minutes and check for the hemostasis if the bleeding isn't stopped then this tooth is not indicated for your pulpotomy if the bleeding has stopped then you can go ahead with the pulpotomy procedure once this hemostasis is achieved or when the blood uh, is stopped you can place a zinc oxide eugenol either completely or you can put zinc oxide eugenol as a base and then you can restore it with your GIC material and once this is done immediately you can place your stainless steel crown so this picture summarizes the procedure using formocrisol that is first one is remove the caries complete uh, removal of your coronal pulp then place the cotton pellet which is wetted with formocrisol solution for four minutes once the hemostasis is achieved the restoration is done with zinc oxide eugenol and finally the stainless steel crown is placed the second agent that is glutaraldehyde glutaraldehyde is a common fixative which has been suggested as an alternative to formocrisol for the various pulp treatment modalities it has a limited shelf life let's see how does it work it produces a rapid surface fixation of the underlying pulpal tissue. So it causes a narrow zone of eosinophilic stained and compressed fixed tissue which is found directly beneath the area of application which blends into the normal, vital normal appearing tissue apically. With time this glutaraldehyde fixed zone is replaced by collagenous tissue thus the entire root canal tissue is vital. The, the procedure is same as formocrisol. Once the hemostasis is achieved, 2-5% to 5 of glutaraldehyde is applied to the pulp by cotton pellet for 5 minutes as it causes minimum alteration to the pulpal tissue. The cavity is then sealed with zinc oxide eugenol and then the tooth is restored with stainless steel crown. Let's see its advantages and disadvantages. The advantages include reaction with pulp is reversible. Molecules of glutaraldehyde do not diffuse out of apical foramen. It fixes tissue instantly and excess solution is unnecessary. It is not known to be cytotoxic, neutrogenic or carcinogenic and it has no known systemic toxic effect. So the disadvantages include it is expensive and it also causes irritation which results in an internal resorption. The next agent is your calcium hydroxide. This calcium hydroxide is an antibacterial which causes an antibacterial effect as well as it possesses a ideal pH which has been offered as a prime reason for its effectiveness. The next is your ferric sulfate. It is a non-haldehyde chemical which has received attention as a pulpotomy agent. It, is, it was proposed as a pulpotomy medicament for vital primary teeth. 
a coagulative and a hemostatic agent in dentistry. It showed promising results as a dressing material for the primary teeth pulpotomies. So let's see how does this work. The ferric and the sulfate ions causes an agglutination in the blood proteins. Okay, this ferric ion protein complex mechanically seals the cut vessels, thus produces the hemostasis. By forming the plugs that occlude the capillary orifices, the protein complex also prevents the formation of blood clots, thereby minimizing the risk of inflammation and internal resorption in the pulp therapy. So let's see the procedure. Hemorrhage is controlled by using a sterile cotton pellet and a slight pressure for 3 to 5 minutes. A solution of 15.5% ferric sulfate is applied for 15 seconds. You have to note this, it is 15 seconds. But whereas your uh, formicrosol was for 4 minutes, this is 15 seconds on the pulp stems using a cotton pellet. Upon re removal of the cotton pellets, the wound may appear brown and no bleeding should be evident. Then zinc oxide eugenol base is placed over the pulp stumps and allowed to set and then stainless steel crown is placed. So next one is your partial pulpotomy. Generally this question is asked for the UG exams that is called Civex pulpotomy. It is the removal of uh, only the outer layer of damage and hypodermic tissue in the exposed pulp. It is considered to be the procedure stage between pulp capping and complete pulpotomy. It is a mode of treatment which is widely used in the permanent dentition but less in the primary teeth. So let's see the rationale and the advantages of Clivex, Civex pulpotomy. The main advantage of partial pulpotomy is that a successful outcome will allow the continuation of the normal development of the tooth including further root development and maturation. Apex formation and thickening of a thin root walls may occur in young teeth. The tooth following a partial pulpotomy will retain its natural color and translucency. In comparison to the coronal discoloration in many teeth undergo after pulpectomy. And partial pulpotomy have advantage over complete pulpotomy in the preservation of cell rich coronal pulp tissues. So when is this Civex pulpotomy indicated? Uh, so when there is sufficient tooth structure is present to allow a proper restoration and a full coverage of the crown with a bonded resin composite strip crowns. Partial pulpotomy is highly indicated in a very young tooth with a wide open apex and very thin root dentin walls. The decisive factor for selection of the partial pulpotomy and its success is a healthy, non-inflamed and asymptomatic vital pulp. So there are other few newer agents which are used in pulpotomy is electrosurgery, laser, MTA, biodentin, enamel matrix derivatives. I'll show you a few of the pictures. This is MTA pulpotomy where you can see the coronal pulp is removed. This is a cross section. Coronal pulp is removed completely and MTA is placed which is followed by stainless steel crown. This is electrosurgical pulpotomy. This is laser pulpotomy where the laser is used to remove the coronal pulp. And this is biotentin pulpotomy. And there are few reasons for the failure of pulpotomy therapy. Let's see what are the reasons. We might uh, do the wrong diagnosis by saying that the radicular pulp is non-inflamed and non-infected. That is one of the main reasons for the failure of pulpotomy. And we also use zinc oxide eugenol, right? So eugenol causes an irritation for the pulp space filling material. An attempt to preserve a tooth with a deep proximal carious lesion, a condition leading to leakage due to incomplete coverage. There is also a signs of failures can be seen on radiographic pathological signs in pulp canal obliteration, which can be seen in root canal of pulpotomized primary molars. In presence, however, it is not considered as a failure. With this I would like to conclude by saying there are different various uh, medicaments which are used in pulpotomy which 
everything has its own pros and cons so basically it depends on a clinic clinician so choose your material with the more uh, advantages than disadvantages thank you